Therapist Assessment, the Upper Limb Neurodynamic Test 1. Claire lies close to the side of the bed. I've supported her arm, some weight on my thigh, and some weight taken through my hand. Note the starting position, thumb on thumb, and the tips of the fingers supported. The shoulder girdles are kept equal. They're stabilised. Step 1 is shoulder abduction to 100-110 degrees. Then wrist extension, supination, shoulder lateral rotation, and then elbow extension, checking the responses to each component. In that position, neck flexion or neck lateral flexion away will increase symptoms if the arm if they're neurogenic and they'll be eased with neck lateral flexion towards the test arm. A variation can be performed using your elbow. This can really cradle the arm and provide support to someone who's a little fearful. The upper limb one position is carried out and note in this position I'm performing some wrist extension and elbow extension as a mobilization technique. The sural nerve anatomy and palpation the sural nerve can be palpated on the lateral aspect of the lower leg. It's lateral to the Achilles tendon and turns a 90 degree corner around the lateral malleoli. It'll be tightened up on dorsiflexion and inversion. Therapist assessment, dorsiflexion, inversion, straight leg raise. Claire's foot is dorsiflexed, inverted and with the arm on the shaft of the tibia I'm performing a straight leg raise. Passive technique. In hip flexion, dorsiflexion inversion, I'm going to do a knee extension. This is a reasonably gentle technique and may be appropriate for an Achilles tendonitis where there's a sural nerve component. Passive technique. In dorsiflexion inversion, I'm going to do a massage of the sural nerve. The area around the Achilles tendon often gets swollen and the nerve may be implicated in this. Self-management in hip flexion, dorsiflexion inversion, I'm going to encourage Claire to do a knee extension. A simple and easy way to mobilise the sural nerve. Passive techniques. Wedge mobilization techniques for the cervical thoracic junction. Here I've placed the wedge on or about Claire's T1, T2 level. Notice how her head is supported and my right hand rests on her clavicles. There is no force through the jaw and the whole head and neck is retracted back. This allows a superior mobilization at the cervical thoracic junction and it can also be converted to more of a neural mobilization if the same technique is performed with the arm in an upper limb one position as here or of course you could put the arm in any neural load position that you wish.